Welcome to Manchester Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, let me start with some macro thoughts. One of Wall Street's biggest stock bears ratchets up his Bitcoin forecast to $6,000. On the 30th of December, I suggested one. my first, uh, my conviction trade of the year was to be long Bitcoin and then long Bitcoin versus a short gold trade, both of which worked out pretty impressively. Euro dollar, let's take a look at what's happening with that. We're at 117.44. Um, I kind of think near term we've set a top above 119, but you know, we'll have to see how things plan out, play out. Home Thoughts, I've been reading a wonderful collection of stories, the Picador Book of Journeys. Um, a writer of travel, fine travel books herself, Davidson decries a genre. She describes in her introduction as decadent. In the Picador Book of Journey, she gives house room to all kinds of characters you would never think of as travel writers, as well as a few hoary classics. Beautiful collection, really is. But uh, what I found pretty remarkable, there's so many interesting article, uh, stories, I'll get to them, but one that caught my attention last night was via Snaipur returning to his village in India and uh, for the very first time and really um, uh, it, it's an extraordinary piece of writing. He's so harsh and hard edged. Um, beautiful book of stories and here too it's austere fair, the elegant prose of Joan Didion um, distills the counter-revolutionary terror of El Salvador in which no ground is solid, no depth of field reliable, no perception so definite that it might not dissolve into its reverse. Apsley Cherry Gerard's account of survival in the hellish cold of Antarctica had me shivering in my deck chair on the hottest day of the year, that was incredible too. And a lovely story by Doris Lessing, driving through the Rhodesian bush of her childhood, uh, but back through the blue and mauve and purple and white hazes of time. And then, if, you know, I've been reading some Wolfram Fesiger, and he too was featured uh, in this book. And take a look at uh, the piece from Arabian Sands and it's about uh, the Bedouin and how their life was set to change. And here too in Kenya we have pastoralists and they too, one suspects, are going to be uh, salamied by the passage of time and global warming. I always like this photograph of David Hockney, this painting, and then probably my favourite fruit, uh, mangosteens. This one was painted by Amanda Almira Newton. 1915 and uh, it's here like, there's a fruit called shoki shoki which is very very similar but I think it's slightly different political reflections who will be the next to go the celebrity president asks the daily show JK Rowling tweets this of Donald Trump the New Yorker's David Remnick uh, writes about Donald Trump's true allegiances Early last November, just before Election Day, Barack Obama was driven through the crisp late-night gloom of the outskirts of Charlotte. As he barnstormed North Carolina on behalf of Hillary Clinton, he was in no measure serene or confident. The polls, the analytics remained in Clinton's favor. Yet Obama, with the unique vantage point of being the first American, African-American president had watched as night after night immense crowds cheered and hooted for a demagogue who had launched a business career with blacks need not apply housing developments in Queens and a political career with a racist conspiracy theory known as birtherism. During his speech in Charlotte that night, Obama warned that no one really changes in the presidency. Rather, the office magnifies who you already are. 
So if you accept the support of clan sympathizers before your president, or you're kind of slow in disowning it, saying, well, I don't know, then that's how you'll be as president. We've seen this coming, he said. Donald Trump is not an outlier. He is a culmination, a logical conclusion of the rhetoric and tactics of the Republican Party for the past 10, 15, 20 years. What surprised me was the degree to which those tactics and rhetoric completely jumped the rails. Steve Bannon, of course, perhaps more than any single person other than the man himself, is the reason Donald Trump is President of the United States. Bannon, a choleric figure who was once described as a Leninist, who wanted to destroy the state and bring everything crashing down, it must be said that he has come pretty close to doing so. He served as chief architect of Trump's presidential campaign from the Republican National Convention until Election Day, and then as the senior strategist in Trump's White House, a position from which he has just been ousted. Bannon was responsible for Trump's victory and for shaping his early presidency. He came on board at a key moment in the presidential race after the debacle of the Republican convention and was campaign CEO through to election day. He helped shape the Trump campaign into the white supremacist dog whistle fest that it became the idea that far from building coalitions, it was possible to run a campaign that would play directly to the core white male base was in part Bannon's particular inspiration. Who talks like this? I feel jacked up free, got my hands back on my weapons, it's Bannon the Barbarian, I'm going to crush the opposition. And then I found this pretty amusing. Poor Don the Con without Nazi Steve in the Oval, in the orange sphincter will be forced to eat borscht with Nazi Gorka and Norman Bates Miller. Sad. So it's a very interesting moment that we've got to here, and I can't see President Trump lasting, I really can't. And I think, you know, if he was a cleverer politician, he would have been more subtle, he would not have broken cover on this matter. You could quite easily uh, continue, um, uh, your, 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 uh, you could quite easily have dog whistled without breaking cover. I think, you know, this, this choleric side to him was the big political mistake. Of course, I disagree with it, but I'm just saying from a political standpoint. Spain, Barcelona, portrait of the Imam Ripley, Abdel Bakir Sati, who is at the center of the investigation. This goes back to something I wrote in 2015, January. I was speaking about the arrival of the asymmetric threat on the streets of Paris and how it was deeply unsettling and will surely keep Europe off balance and how it presaged a new normal. Ten missing, five injured after USS John McCain collides with a merchant vessel. International markets, these countries run the largest trade surfaces with China. Take a look, it's quite, quite interesting, I must say. Currency markets, euro dollar 117.42, dollar index hovering just below the 93.50 level, dollar yen 109.14. Swiss franc 0.9661, the pound is very soft, 128.67. Aussie, uh, let's take a look at where that is, 0.7922. Um, uh, India rupee 64.065, South Korean one 11.39.11, the real 314.68. Egyptian pound 17.79, and the South African rand 13.1825. Dollar yen, let's take a look at that. Um, it's a complicated one to call at the moment, um, but we could see a double bottom down there at 10860, but we're gonna have to find out. Dollar index, let's see how it behaves. It's gotta maintain uh, this 9350 level, otherwise we're gonna see a steep fall again. Uh, Jack Ma is ahead of Jeff Bezos in, the gro in his grocery store ambitions. Um, Alibaba has been quietly incubating its Hema grocery store concept for two years. It rolled out three new locations last month, bringing the total to 13, the bulk in Shanghai and Beijing. The sprawling bright supermarkets combine online and offline shopping, where customers who have downloaded Hema's app 
scan barcodes on products and pay with their Alipay digital wallet. The live seafood section is one of the main attractions for Chinese consumers who prize fresh fish and often insist on choosing it themselves. Shoppers at Hema can pick out their own crab or lobster and have it cooked on the spot to eat in the store or get it delivered to their home. The stores also double as warehouses for delivery in 30 minutes within a close radius. This is not a supermarket. This is not a food mall. This is a brand new model, said CEO Daniel Zhang. Hema is just an example of how Alibaba can operate the existing offline business. Crude oil had this stunning rebound yesterday, it got as high as 48.62 now, um, uh, nearly a 3% jump. Uh, let's see what happens next, but uh, this could invalidate my bare, bare perspective. In fact, gold, uh, 12.85 last. Interesting point in emerging markets, all the outperformance of India relative to EM since 2013 can be attributed to the drop in oil prices. Sub-Saharan Africa, despite the threats of the Minister of Security, hundreds of thousands of people are in the streets in Togo to demand term limits. And I went back to Paul Virilio, the revolutionary contingent attains its ideal form, not in the place of production, but in the street. Where for a moment it stops being a cog in the technical machine and itself becomes a motor, a machine of attack. In other words, a producer of speed. Your bullets are no longer scaring us, Togo protesters want term limits for families who've been in power for 50 years. Disgrace 2.0, just like Omar al-Bashir, Grace Mugabe allowed to flee South Africa. With Congo finances collapsing, desperate government has few options. Um, the choice of lead manager, this is as Congo's government soliciting urgent help from Western donors and the IMF last month to contain an economic crisis. The chairman of the state mining company brought an unusual guest to the Prime Minister's office. It was Raymond O'Leary, a vice president from Russia's second largest bank, state-owned VTB, to discuss Eurobond aiming to raise funds for the cash-strapped government, Congolese and VTB officials confirmed. The choice of lead manager was striking, given that VTB is under US sanctions, any deal would have shut the door on the IMF and pretty much all Western funding owing to donor objections. VTB's press office emphasized, however, that VTB Capital Arm in charge of Eurobond issuances is not under sanctions. But the fact that the meeting took place at all revealed just how desperate the DR Congo's government has become as it seeks to head off a collapse in national finances that is hitting the economy. Inflation is now at 50%. Congolese franc has lost 30%, making it one of the world's worst performers this year, though it's had a rebound in the last few uh, two weeks. Kabila took power when his father was assassinated in 2001 and has since won two elections. The IMF representative Congo declined to comment, as did the Prime Minister's office and the Finance Minister, but in a speech last month, Central Bank Governor Dear Gracious Mutombo was uncharacteristically blunt. The economy is in very bad shape, he said. Currently, there is no possibility, with the current economic situation and political instability, to have sufficient confidence to sustain a stable exchange rate. Earlier this month, Standard & Poor's downgraded Congo's sovereign credit rating, predicting year-end depreciation of a franc of about 35%. So, it's a very, very tricky thing. There's no work, he said. That's why we're out here fighting like gangsters. The price President Kabila is exacting for his continuing presence is just simply brutal. Very interesting piece, which got a very uh, interesting response with Conrad on the Congo River. The smoked monkeys brought the point home during my first day on a boat on the Congo River. I'd embraced the unfamiliar, how to bend under the rail to fill my wash bucket from the river, where to step around the tethered goat in the dark, and the best way to prepare a pot of grubs. But when I saw the monkeys impaled on snakes, skulls picked clean and brains and teeth thrusting out, I looked otherness in the face and saw myself mirrored back. I was the real exotica, the only tourist to take this boat in nearly a decade and the only white woman as far as the crew knew ever. 
Expect to be kidnapped, people have warned me. Expect to have everything stolen. And expect every arrangement to go awry. Bring your own mosquito net. Waterproof everything twice and strap your cash around your hand. The DRC I read in my guidebook was a huge area of dark corners, both geographically and mentally, where man has fought continuously against his own demons and elements of nature at large. This, in other words, was the heart of darkness, which is why it wanted to come. Well worth reading. I asked if the river had changed. The river hasn't changed. I asked if the forest had changed. The forest hasn't changed. But I hazarded it was a lot taller, closer to Kisangani than it is here. Has it always been like that? Forest hasn't changed. If the MPLA gets 55% or less, it doesn't give Lorenko enough political leeway. It's effectively a defeat. And uh, this is, they will almost certainly be calling him their president after next Wednesday's election, the first new head of state in all of Purdue Angola in 38 years. There is much that still needs to be done, he told the rally, as a loudspeaker encouraged applause, we will put you to work. He said, vowing to grow agricultural production in this poor farming community. South African all shares up 9.18% here today. Dollar versus Rand, 13.1825. I didn't realize Nigeria had an official bagpipe ban. And uh, the president's uh, private secretary, the crowd is massive, I mean very, very massive. Baba Buhari is genuinely loved. People love Baba and Baba loves his people. I'm just in tears. He's back. Presidential wing was a god with governors, ministers, service, chiefs and aides. A rival party now at the presidential wing. The Nigerian all chairs up 37.38% year to date. Ghana stock exchange composite index is up 35.28% year to date. I like this, the sun has set on the best vacation ever. Four season Serengeti is as perfect as the sunset. David indeed was tweeting computer generated president. However, if the results were received randomly and not in sort of bulk uh, batches, then the profile is actually mathematically consistent. Ken Gen powering Kenya to the future was my piece. The Kenya Electricity Generating Company was established in 1954, listed at the, 19, at the Nairobi Securities Exchange in 2006. In 2006, the Securities Exchange was located in Nation Center, and I recall the euphoria and the excitement around that listing. It was a momentous moment in the history of the Kenyan capital markets, and I urged the Kenyatta administration version 2, to revisit that period, when our capital markets felt like they were leapfrogging into a bright new future, when Kenya Inc. was creating an ownership society right in front of our eyes. Today, Kenyan is the largest power producer in Kenya and East Africa, with an installed power capacity of 1,630 megawatts. Kenyan is the largest geothermal producer in Kenya, placing Kenya seventh globally in geothermal installed capacity. The geothermal resource in Kenya, which largely follows the contours of the Rift Valley, whilst not infinite, could of itself power Kenya Inc. into the future. Kenyan share price has soared 58.11% this year, outperforming the benchmark index by a factor of two. Conditions precedent for the steep price rise increase are worthy of study. I recall a Mindspeak session I hosted with Kenjan last year. They produced a panel, and as I listened to this panel, I realized Kenjan had bench strength. The quietly spoken and cerebral managing director, Albert Mugo, whom all shareholders, I'm sure, would like to see extended in his term, had empowered his senior management. Electricity generation is a very capital-intensive business, and as I scanned the audience, I saw big-ticket lenders like JICA, the European Investment Bank, and many others. Kenjin has been transacting with these folks for a number of years. The longevity of the capital markets transaction experience is a very valuable resource. In my opinion, these were conditions precedent for the parabolic share price rise we have witnessed. Last year, Kenjin undertook a rights issue in order to right size increase tier one capital, optimize its balance sheet. The rights issue offered 4.396 billion new shares seeking to raise 28.798 billion Kenyan shillings. The total subscription rate uh, 
was 92.01%, leaving 351.21 million shares, which were not allotted. A key driver of share price performance is the supply versus de demand dynamic. Clearly, those 351.21 million shares weighed heavy on the share price, and we saw the price dip below the rights issue price of 655. In February this year, Kenjin announced that those 351.21 million shares had been placed with PICSA, Public Investment Corporation, a South African based institutional investor. This was the final condition precedent for the share price to get entry. PICSA single act inverted the supply versus demand dynamic. They extinguished the surplus supply of shares and then started a mopping up operation. PICSA exhibited the style of investing, which is actually very similar to the style deployed by the sage of Omaha, Warren Buffett. Today, Kenjian trades on a price earnings ratio of 8.565. Investments are capital intensive in geothermal energy, but they have a seriously long earnings tail and a hockey stick profile. Kenjin has the know-how and the expertise to tap this. One of the key ingredients of Baker National Cake that creates jobs for our people is cheap and consistent energy. You cannot build an economy with generators or diesel power. Kenjin sits on the cutting edge. Its share price still has a lot further to catch up with the prospect. Share price is up 58.119% this year. It closed at 9.25 on Friday. Uh, price earnings ratio of 8.565. Uh, tourism uh, sector booms on peaceful poll, uh, and this was as I found it in the Masai Mara as well. Coastal tourism, however, is still soft. Uh, TPS Serena is the only listed tourism stock at the Securities Exchange. That link is on Rich Wrap Ups. And let, let, let me put up a photograph of Fort Jesus and the Mombasa Club. And another photograph of us when we were en route to the Masai Mara. I tweeted, nothing in front of us but the road to the Mara crossing through Masai country. Nairobi all share up 23.89% year to date. NSE 20 up 25.31% year to date. Two elderly foreigners were found murdered in Mombasa. And uh, that's on Lynch Road, not far from where we used to live. Once again, thank you for stopping by.